Hello, welcome to Electronics Education. This is Vincent Chen. We are going to continue our lecture series around the subject of feedback. So, let's start the lecture. Feedback Part Three Series Shunt. Part Three Series Shunt Feedback. Well, let's start with the ideal series shunt feedback. Series shunt feedback, which means the series mixing and shunt sampling. So series mixing uh, indicates the signal mix, the way of mixing uh, based on the voltage. So it's a voltage mixing, and shunt sampling tells us it's a voltage sampling. So the nature of the amplifier uh, should be a voltage amplifier, a voltage amplifier. And the second type of uh, feedback topology is called uh, shunt series. So it's a current mixing and series sampling. So shunt series feedback is the current input and current output. So it's a current amplifier. And then the third type of uh, feedback topology uh, goes to the series series feedback. The series mixing, again, is the voltage mixing. Vs minus Vf equals Vi. Uh, so look at the, the circuit diagram. The signal on the left, the three signal on the left is all voltage. But the one signal on the right is the current. It's called IO, circuit diagram. All right? So it's the current sampling. So voltage input, current output. So from voltage to transfer to a current. So current divided by voltage is the conductance. So there is a meaning uh, uh, association with, with transfer. So it's the transconductance amplifier. Transconductance amplifier. The last one, shunt, shunt feedback. So it's a shunt mixing and shunt sampling. So current input, IS minus IF equals II. And then voltage VO uh, at the output. So trans resistance amplifier, trans resistance amplifier. Now, so this lecture is gonna focus on series shunt feedback, series mixing, shunt sampling. So voltage input and voltage output. So let's check the circuit diagram. Vs minus Vf equals Vi. So Vi represent the input signal of the amplifier. So the amplifier goes to the output voltage. And then there's the right hand of the, the, the feedback neck will sample the output voltage doing the reverse transmission and generate a feedback signal on the left, left hand side of the feedback network and goes to the mixer, mixing with the external signal and going to a closed loop configuration. All right? So voltage, again, is the voltage input and voltage output. So voltage input, the series mixing. So what is the series mixing? How to realize a series mixing from the circuit perspective? All right, so Vs minus Vf equals Vi. So look at the circuit on the left. So there's the kickoff voltage law, right? Based on the KVL based on the KVL, Vs equals what? Vi plus Vf. Vs, KVL, the loop, right? So therefore, Vs minus Vf equals Vi, all right? So Vs minus Vf equals Vi, then what? Then got amplified, Vi got amplified by the blue network. So it's the voltage control voltage source, AVVI. And uh, based on the tethering of uh, uh, equivalent circuit, the RO represents the output resistance of the amplifier, of the open loop amplifier. So blue associated with the blue on the right, right? Okay, so pay attention to be sensitive to the color. And then there's a sampling network. Sample the output voltage. Sample, show the sampling and send back sent to the feedback network. So the sample voltage on the right-hand side of the feedback network is the VO. So going the reverse 
transmission. So again, it's another voltage control voltage source. So beta VO. So beta represent the feedback factor, the reverse transmission factor. A is blue is responsible for, for the forward transmission. And the purple network is responsible for the reverse transmission. So now what do you see? You see the VF equals beta V VO. VF equals beta V VO. The subscript V for the beta indicates the nature of the, the factor, of the feedback factor. It's the voltage in and then voltage out. All right, so now let's try to consolidate to reduce a sort of complicated uh, left-hand side network to a more simple equivalent circuit. So the first one, the RF, which means the closed loop input resistance or the input resistance with, with feedback. The one on the left is without feedback. It's the open loop input resistance, RI. So RF is the closed loop input resistance. And now the second one, the second component is the voltage control voltage source. And the AVF represent what? The closed loop voltage gain. And the third component, RF, ROF, represent the closed loop output resistance. So three components can represent the whole, the whole series shunt voltage Amplifier, all right? So, because this is the ideal structure. So there's no doubt the relationship between the open loop gain and the closed loop gain should be remain, should remain the same, right? Do you understand what I'm saying about the ideal structure? So just picture the ideal feedback in your mind or just quickly draw out. So what's the ideal structure? Vs minus Vf equals Vi. Check the circuit diagram. All right, so try to match the ideal feedback structure. SS minus SF equals SI. So now Vs minus Vf equals Vi supported by KVL. And then what? Then SI times A equals SO. And what do you see? You see there's no current flowing through RO. Therefore, VO equals AVVI, right? So VI times A equals VO. Corresponding to, uh, corresponds to the SI times A equals SO. So now, then what? Then SO times beta going to the SF. S means signal. So now, what do you see? VO times beta equals VF. So it's exactly the same. So therefore, no, there's no doubt that this will happen. Right? So the relationship between, so what's the difference for this one and uh, the one that you are very familiar with? Because we put the meaning for the A and the AF. So now it's the, the nature of the amplifier is the voltage amplifier, the subscript represent the nature of the amplifier. It's the voltage amplifier, all right? So it's the voltage gain, the open loop voltage gain and the open loop and the closed loop voltage gain. The second component, so, we, so the, the closed loop voltage gain has been solved. So what about the RIF? The closed loop input res resistance. So according to the definition, so Vs, the voltage, the closed loop external source divided by the current in, right? So what's the input current? The II. The II. So what is the II? Look at the left hand side. Look at left, left side. So I is the VI over RI, okay? So let me, I, I don't want to spend too much time on this because this is quite, uh, on, you know, it's, it's quite easy, all right? And uh, it's just the math. So RI, VS minus VI, so VS sub, sub so replace VS uh, with what? VI plus VF, and the VF equals beta VO, and VO equals A VI. So now you can cancel the VI in the numerator and the denominators goes to this equation. It's so beautiful. So this is the relationship between the open loop resistance, RI, and the closed loop input 
resistance R I F again. You see the amount of feedback. So multiply by an amount of feedback. One plus beta. So what did this equation tells you? It tells you the through the series mixing, the input resistance got 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 what got increased by the amount of feedback one plus a beta. So now the final component, the third component, is the closed loop output resistance. The resistance, the output resistance with feedback. Again, the step number one. So when you try to find out the output resistance, what's the first step? You have to remove the external source. So let's let the Vs equals zero. And now let's put a, a testing voltage, Vt. Let's put on the testing voltage, a voltage generator and falling through the current I. So the relationship, the ratio between the Vt divided by I tells us the upper resistance with feedback. So let's just, you know, based on the KVL, the loop equation, or the I equals, you know, VT minus AVI divided by RO. And then you try to just find the relationship between the VT and the VI, right? So VI, for example, so now VI, because VS, is removed. So VI equals negative VF. And VF equals what? Beta VT. Alright? So VO has been replaced by VT. So now again, you see the relationship between the open loop upper resistance and the closed loop again is divided by the amount of feedback. 1 plus a beta through the shunt sampling, the upper resistance got what? Got reduced by the same amount, the same factor, the amount of feedback. So this lecture we focus on the ideal series shunt feedback. So here's the takeaway. So we can try to consolidate a kind of a little bit complicated feedback structure, see you shown feedback to a very simple one. To highlight the three uh, important parameter we have to, we want to know. Number one, the closed loop input resistance, RAF. So number two, the close the closed loop voltage gain, EVF. And number three, the final one, the closed loop output resistance. For the closed loop input resistance, it got increased because of the series mixing. And this is unchanged, because it's the un ideal structure, because it's the shunt sampling, so the output resistance got reduced, right? So this is the ideal series shunt feedback. All right, so we have come to the end of the lecture. I hope you, you know, can become more confident on learning the feedback. So in the next lecture, we are going to talk about the opposite feedback. The series shunt, what's the opposite of series shunt? It's going to be a shunt series. And see you in the next, next lecture. Thanks for watching.